You're listening to Wiretap with Jonathan Goldstein. Today's episode, What I've Learned. I'm speaking to you tonight from a very humble place. I'm about to share with you something that isn't a very easy thing to admit, but here goes. In my life, I have learned nothing. I say this as an adult, an experienced college-educated human being who has lived and loved, traveled abroad, and worked in many different fields in many different cities, and yet, really, I've learned nothing. Allow me to start from the beginning. When I was in grade one, there was this girl I liked. She had long, straight blonde hair, and I got it into my head that what would be a really playful and coquettish thing to do, what would really get her attention, would be to grab the two halves of her hair in each of my hands and then quickly tie them into a huge knot. As she sat on the concrete of the schoolyard, waiting her turn at the hopscotch court, I approached her from behind, and with all of my strength, I committed the knot. This was the best thing I could come up with to make a lasting impression on her. Now jump cut to two decades later, where I am in a college library, talking to a woman in my class I am hoping to woo. For some reason, apropos to pretty much nothing, I pull off the fancy Fez hat she is wearing, a recent purchase from a Moroccan vacation, and I place it on my head. I then begin to flap my arms up and down in imitation of a flying monkey from The Wizard of Oz. My idea of courtship is utterly lost on her, and, needless to say, she never talked to me again. I tell you this to illustrate a point. I knew nothing then, and I know nothing now. I have learned nothing. I read books and forget them almost completely weeks after having read them. I read and enjoy Tolstoy's Anna Karenina, but what of it have I retained? A vivacious woman named Anna had some hard times and was later run over by a train. I remember even less about Bergman's The Seventh Seal, which I've seen three times. And although I once visited a friend's beehive, where he explained in painstaking detail how honey is made, I think the only thing I still recall is that at some point he was stung on the nose, and I laughed, and he threw a jar of honey at me. You would think that at the very least I have learned some of the basics, but I assure you that I have not. I still cannot tie my shoelaces with one bow, and when I make craft dinner, I still have to read the instructions on the side of the box. And when using the washroom, even in my own home, I still look behind the shower curtain. You would think that I have learned at this point that monsters do not exist, but I have not. In fact, I consider my ambivalence on the subject of monsters a positive thing, a sign that I still retain an undying sense of life's endless possibility. If I have learned close to nothing about the world around me, I have learned even less about myself. Am I the kind of guy who prefers wallets to billfolds? Who knows? Crispy bacon to underdone bacon? They each have their charms. Beer to ale? I'm not even sure I know the difference. Who is the real me? Am I the kind of guy who enjoys Sunday afternoons doing yard work while listening to CBC Radio 2? Or am I the kind of guy who likes to shoot empty scotch bottles off a fence while listening to Leonard Skinnerd? Or am I that most dreaded of all human types, the kind of guy who likes to start off all of his sentences by saying, I'm the kind of guy. I'm the kind of guy who fears that he has not yet learned a thing about himself whatsoever because this seems to be the worst of all human sins, not knowing thyself. A couple of months ago, I was traveling by train to the U.S., and a park ranger gave a speech to a group of passengers in the dining car about a battle that was waged along the route we were traveling. At a certain point, as we all looked out the train windows, the ranger explained that the Americans did not win the War of 1812, that the British had. A woman then said that she was taught by her grade 10 history teacher that, in fact, the Americans did win. Ma'am, the park ranger explained with a laugh, anyone who knows anything about these matters knows that Britain won that one. That teacher you had was just plain ignorant. 
I admired the ranger's certitude, and the woman's certitude, and even the woman's teacher's certitude. I admire certitude, mostly because I feel compelled to punctuate every statement I make with the words, "But what do I know?" I predict that when I am old, after all my decades of experience, I will still not have learned a thing. On my deathbed, in my final days, I will not be one of those people described in eulogies as courageous or inspiring. I fear that instead, I might be referred to as foolhardy or dense. As my children and grandchildren circle my bed, expecting some profound dying statement, some culmination of all my worldly learning, I will look at them with eyes as empty of wisdom as the day I was born. But what do I know? Hello, Zuzu. Hi, Johnny. Hi, how you doing? I'm fine. Hey, so you're you're、uh, you're now in grade five, right? That's right. And you're ten years old. Mm-hmm. Looking back on these ten years of、uh, of of experiences that you've had, what would you say is one of the biggest things you've learned in your life? Well,、um, never trust first impressions. Really? I I think so because if you meet someone. And you think they're nice? They could just be using you. Really? Did that ever happen to you? Yeah. What What happened? Well, do you remember Carol? Your Your friend Carol? Yeah. If you want to call her my friend, she was always being nice to me. Mm-hmm. When she figured out that I was going to Leron for my birthday party. To To the To the big amusement park. Exactly. She started being nice. She was all nice, 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 very polite to everyone in my family. And then, so after my birthday party, she said, "I'm not being nice to you until next year when you go to Iran again." Wow. First impressions never count. Do you have another lesson that you've learned in life? Ah,、uh, yeah. Never to scratch your butt on stage. Never scratch your butt on stage. All right, that's valid. How, how did you learn that? Uh, well, we're in rehearsal. Rehearsal for ballet show. Okay. And they said never to scratch your butt on stage. Wait. So your teacher? This is one of the things your teacher taught you. And this is the same teacher who taught you like to do plies and dégagés. Yeah. And do you think that's an important life lesson to learn? <sighs> well, one. All right. Well, do you, do you have anything else? No. That's it. Just those two.、Uh, let me just recap.、Um, don't trust first impressions, and never scratch your butt on stage.、Mm-hmm. I mean, do, do you think armed with those two principles? Do you th- I mean, do you think that's enough to to kind of get by? Well, well, to start. <laughs> My education. My dad Lou wakes my sister Jenny and me up fifteen minutes before we have to be in class. He's been doing this since we were in kindergarten. That was when my mom left. I sit at the kitchen table and write notes for Jenny and myself, explaining why we're late. I can sign my dad's signature better than he can. The only time they knew my note was forged was when I signed it. Love, Lou O'Neill. Today is class picture day. I try to explain to my dad that no one dresses up for it in grade seven, but he forces me to wear a blue wool suit anyway. The ground froze last night, and it's almost impossible to get to the bus stop in my leather shoes. I miss the days when I was younger, 
and could wear a snowsuit to school. I wish I could wear a snowsuit all day long, sitting in the cafeteria and even climbing the ropes in gym class. When we get on the bus, it takes Jenny and me a while to find a seat whose cushion hasn't been slashed. It's considered nasty to sit on one of those. I sit beside Donna. Donna is the tallest girl in grade 7, and the other kids are always saying that she is a narc. I try to explain what Brave New World is about on the ride to school, as there is going to be a test on it in class today. I describe how all the children in Brave New World had to take drugs every day, and Jenny accuses me of making stuff up. Everyone tells me that my wool shirt and my wool skirt don't match. A girl in my class gets everyone to sign her petition, saying that I need a haircut. Last year, I was chosen to read a poem at the assembly in the school's auditorium. That seems like a hundred years ago. I wasted the whole of grade six drawing stars in my notebook. I wonder if I might have learned anything. Now in grade seven, I draw horses. Even in grade school, my dad never let me trace anything. He says once you get hooked on tracing, you're finished. I turn out to be the only kid in class who has read Brave New World. The other kids give me dirty looks for my act of betrayal. In English class, Danny and I hand in identical reports about what our family means to us. Now we both have zeros. I don't understand parentheses. I add them randomly in my short story. I do the same with semicolons. I start new paragraphs whenever I get bored and in my stories when my hand starts to hurt. My pencil is almost sharpened down to the eraser, but the teacher always gives me such a hard time when I ask for a new one. My dad says that if our teacher tells everyone to put their heads down, not to do it. He says that once a person has that kind of control over you, there's no going back. I tell the guidance counselor that I would like a job where I can move from town to town. She asks if I would like to work in sales, but it's the circus life that I have in mind. In moral religious education, the teacher says that love doesn't really last. I write it down in my notebook in case it will be on the exam. At lunch, I take my peanut butter sandwich out of the bag. It's as flat as a piece of paper. After lunch, I take my wool shirt off in class because it is so hot and itchy. And when I do, my t-shirt comes off with it. I'm wearing an undershirt with yellow, pink, and green flowers on it. All the boys whistle and cheer. In music class, they give me a trumpet to learn how to play. It's hot and stinks. I pour liquid soap all over it in the bathroom, and now it blows bubbles. My dad says that my math teacher doesn't know how to teach. I don't know where he gets this. Since I haven't told him anything about the man, it's just something that my dad likes to say about teachers. I have been asking him for ballet lessons since I was seven years old, but he says they are for phonies. He also says that the kids at the community center are on drugs. Daniel got expelled from school today. He refused to leave the premises. He stood on the front steps of school, making kung fu moves in the air. 
He walked around the yard singing, "What's the matter, you? A, you giving me no respect? A, what you think you do? Ah, shut up your face!" In science class, the teacher gave us a test where we had to circle which animals were endangered. I didn't study for it the night before. On the school bus home, I am hoping and praying that elephants are endangered, because I circled them. My friend Paul forgot his copy of Night by Eli Wiesel at school. He gets me to read him the assigned chapter over the telephone. His mother starts to cry on the other end of the line, and Paul yells at her to stop eavesdropping on his phone calls. After dinner, I bring my math book along with me when I go to meet Derek in the park. My dad says that as long as I do my math homework, I won't ever end up a bum. Eight times one is eight. Eight times two is sixteen. Eight times three is twenty-four. Eight times four is thirty-two. Eight times five is forty. Eight times six is forty-eight. Eight times seven is um sixty. Wait, I'm having a mind blank. What I just say? Hello. Hello, John. Hey, Howard. How you doing?、Oh, things are very good, my friend. Things are very good. Really, you sound very upbeat. I just feel really good, my friend. Very, very connected. Things are very good these days. Well,、days. that's great. I mean, I'm you. You, you, you sound.、Uh, you sound unusually、uh, calm and at peace. I feel very at peace. It's a very good choice of words. Wait, what, what was that? I ring a gong to remind me of where I am at the moment. Where are you exactly? Here. Okay. With you, my friend. We、uh, are here together. Right. And did you? Did, and you forgot that? I I don't forget it. It's always present, but it it makes me savor it like like a like the last strawberry in a bowl of strawberries, or raspberries, or any kind of delicious fruit. So wait a second. So this gong is this connected to this new、uh, this new、uh, feeling of、uh, peacefulness? Very much, my friend. Very much. Really? I guess you know. My whole life, I've I've been seeking in a way. I think I was always looking for some spiritual instruction,、mm-hmm. and I found it. You found it in the gong. Yeah, it helps. It helps. It helps me. It helps me focus. It helps me. I mean, for me, each each. Time I, I bang the gong, you know, it's it's my wake up call. You know,、mm-hmm. it keeps me it keeps me grounded.、Mm-hmm. For me, it's like a double espresso. It keeps I'm wired. I'm wired on the gong. The gong、know. has that kind of power over you. Not only on me, on I think on anyone that would would want to use the gong. You know, John, a wise woman once said to me,、mm-hmm. "The past is history, the future is a mystery, but today is the present. It's a gift." Do you mind if I gong? Yeah, I was just—I was yeah, actually expecting exactly. a gong. Yeah. So anyway, nowadays, you know, what I really try to do is I—I, I, you know, I get up really early in the morning.、Oh, what time do you wake up? I try to get up around noon. You remember when we were kids? Like, you know, when it was summer or spring, we'd go in the backyard, we'd grab the hose, we'd spray each other with the hose, the ice cold water. We, yeah. I, every morning I do that. I go outside. I put on my bathing suit. I don't put on my ma- like my adult man bathing suit. I put on my my childhood, you know, skimpy speedo bathing suit. And I take the garden hose and I spray myself with the garden hose. I run around the backyard. I spray the water in the air and I run under it. It's great. How long has this new routine been going on?、Mm, I'd say about two weeks. Two weeks and a few days. Uh huh. 
you know, I, I, with my heightened senses, I can kind of tell that there's that there's some skepticism on your part, and maybe we can help put your mind at ease. You know, maybe lay your burden down hmm. for a moment. You know, have you ever tried any kind of like conscious breathing, any kind of breathing exercises? Um, maybe you know, maybe the odd yoga class here and there. Let's, maybe we can just try together. We can try some. You and me. Even just maybe like a few a few breaths. Okay. I would suggest that you just relax your body, consciously breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. And as you breathe in, think in, I am breathing in. And mm. as you breathe out, think out, I am breathing out. Okay. So let's go. All right. That's it. Out, I'm breathing out. Let's try that again. Keep going. Okay, Howard. I, I think I think I'm. A little, I, I think I'm done with that. I, I feel. I, I think. I think I feel. Uh, I, I'm feeling the effects of that. Howard. Howard. Hello. Are you breathing? Yes, I'm, I was breathing. That's good. We're, I thought we were breathing together. Where were you? We were. We were. we're I'm, I'm still breathing. I just want to get a little snack. Don't stop breathing. In, I'm breathing in. Out, I'm breathing out. Uh-huh. Did you, did you miss lunch today? No, no. No, I feed myself many, many, many meals over the day. You learn about these things. I'm so in tune with my body. So was the breathing good? I guess so. It's hard. It's, you know, for me, this is one of the greatest obstacles. What's like, that? Well, it's like the resistance I feel. Like, I mean, you know, for a very arrogant person like yourself, it's very hard for me to try to get through... To, to show you what I've just taught you, just now, just now, uh-huh. like this one moment, for the first time in your life, you, you, you've been awakened, and, and I get great, great joy in that. And probably, as time goes on, you know, your reverence of me will, will grow, and, and I'll feel that, no matter, no matter how many miles separate us, I'll, I'll know. I can feel, for all my students, I can tell when they're thinking of me, when they're adoring me. What, what are you talking about, your students? You know, what I try to do is I, I, I take to the streets... I try to I try to impart my wisdom to the to the youth of the street. So what are you doing exactly? Let's do a little role playing right now. Like maybe like I'll, I'll be me and you're one of like your your youth at risk. Okay. Okay. So here like I'm squatting. Imagine I'm squatting next to you. I got my bathrobe. All right. I have my orange juice. Yeah. My hair is wet with cold hose water. Now let's start. Okay. Okay. I'm looking at you. I'm staring at you. Yeah. Arrogance, vanity. Excuse me. I'm talking to you. Okay. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to you. I don't know what to say. What does a kid respond to that? Um, yes, I know those words. Sound familiar. What do you know about me, old man? What I know is what you don't know. Which is? Follow me. You're, you're a grown man in an open bathrobe squatting beside me. I'm not going to follow you, perv. Follow me or don't. Okay. But either way. Uh, I'm going to call the police on my cell if you don't get lost. Okay, see, now, that's very good. That's very good. Really? Yeah. Now, what I usually do at that point is, okay, I stand up. I go, whoa, whoa. I put my hands up to show that they're empty. I put the juice down. Now, I say to them, is that what you want to do? You want to run to to technology? You want to run to your cell phone? Or you want to run to your cell phone? Okay, you've just blown my mind. That's right. Learn, don't burn. Boom. Don't make me irate. Educate. Second rate. That's your fate. Unless you capitulate. Howard, you know, all, all I'm hearing is, is you know, you, you're on, you're onto a new kind of scheme. You know, now it's spiritual stuff. Well, how am I supposed to, how am I supposed to believe that this is actually different? I remember mean, when you, you were doing the, the pyramid schemes, you know, you were all excited about that. Then you remember you went to, uh, you decided you were going to go to clown school, Howard. You remember? And then refrigerator repairman school. And, and, and you remember then you, you, and then you started taking martial arts. Howard, are you listening? Howard? I am not knock over my gong. Oh. Jeez, How, do you want to do some breathing? Does it work? I was so 
enlightened at the beginning of this conversation. I was literally surfing the cosmic waves, and now I'm hitting a, a, a piece of dead metal. I had one thing in my arsenal, and that was my gong. Maybe you could use something else as a gong. What am I supposed to use? Well, uh, a wall? You remember? Maybe I'll go to my neighbor's house. Maybe no. I'll go and use their gong. Oh, I want you to find the walk in your cupboard, and I want you to smack the walk with the mallet. The walk. It's in the back. Oh, I didn't really clean it. Wait one sec. It's got a noodle on it. Hey, that's not bad. That's not bad, actually. Try saying something and then hitting it. Just get me scared. I will go out and eat hot dogs. That kind of works. That didn't sound bad. Yeah, that's okay. I don't know what you're doing, but you want to maybe go gong shopping with me tomorrow? Sure. That'd be good. They also... They also have those, like, shrimp chips, because it's like an Asian store. You ever have those shrimp chips? No. They're good. Okay, well, we'll give them a try. Yeah. On Wiretap today, you heard Zuzu, Howard Chakowitz, Dalen Orr, and Heather O'Neill reading from her work, My Education. Wiretap is written and performed by Jonathan Goldstein and produced by Jonathan Goldstein with Sarah Gilbert and Carolyn Warren. You can reach us through our website at cbc.ca slash wiretap. This summer, tune into Wiretap Sunday afternoon at 1. 4 Pacific Time, and Tuesday evening at 8.30.